Next up, we have Noxious Blightbringer, Cursed Plague Bell. Uh, three drop, a mask character. Uh, three, three on top, so three, three for three. Uh, while Noxious Blightbringer is active, deal one to your opponent um, each time they spend a question mark energy. Yeah, probably not as effective as a Tabaxi Rogue because this is a lot more difficult to make them control. And I gave it yeah. a C just simply because we've seen kind of similar stuff that messes with a specific type of energy your opponent's yeah. roll. Like the Black Cat, they have to re-roll the question marks. Sure. Or there's a Quasar which lets you mess around with what energy you spend. Yeah, and that's never really been meta important. So I would give it like a C plus, just because it does deal a damage and it does happen more than you think. It's just not uh, super attractive to just run out for and put that on every team you want. You know, it's not bad. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't fight you for it. I, I, yeah, it's one of those things where you know you need a cheap mass character. This is probably one I pull out of the binder and be like, oh yeah, this could be an option. All right, what about Dolores Nell? Uh, when no while Noxious Blightbringer is active, deal one damage to your opponent each time they purchase an action die. The thing with these two cards is they're very opponent dependent. True. And this could be just by happenstance be super effective in the game you're playing. But trying to get that consistency, um, I don't see it as a viable option to burn your opponent to death. No. Um, yeah, that's the thing. And so when you, by the time you've actually gotten this out, this does next to nothing because here it is, turn three. And if you're if you're playing a game that's action based, it's most likely ramp action based. So they picked it up like turn one, turn two, turn one, turn two. Yeah, you know. And then so yay, you, you land it and you um, you know deal one damage because it's investigation. They want to buy another one or deal two damage because you know they bought two actions, but. A card, a three drop that you're buying once and you're getting two damage out of. Your opponent's at 18 and you're at 20 and you spent three. There's yep. better ways to spend three. So I really don't like this card. I think it's a D. Like you I could think play it's it because, because of the power drop. of a tune, the anti uh, super rare. It, it deserves a little bit higher than that. I, I gave it a C, a C plus, just because of that a tune, the anti team. And you're right, you're probably dead. But if you can do this alongside something else that stalls out Yanti, like a Shriek, then they have two levels and you chip away enough at them to maybe get that one big hit in. Yeah, then but, they then they can't buy, you know, five actions to deal yeah. ten because all of a sudden they're taking five. Yeah. And they lose if they buy that fifth. It is only considerable based on the meta that we're in. Yeah, you yeah, know? exactly. So um the next one is Toxin of Misery. Toxin spelled with a C and an S, yeah, yeah. which is cool. Um, when fielded, deal damage to target player equal to the amount of energy in their reserve pool. Count energy symbols, not faces that show energy, which is, you know, parenthetical text that still exists even though it's been around for a while. So I guess it's good that they're including parenthetical text. Yeah, I would have been pretty hyped about this if it had come out, you know, two years ago. <laughs> Unfortunately. There's just nothing in this modern meta that requires your opponent you to float. have a bunch of energy. Like, maybe you have PXG, the new school, but that means they're floating one energy. Or if you yeah. both bring it, then they're floating two. So you get a you know a nice little win field to deal two, which is kind of cool. But like you said, there's just no no place for it right now. Now, maybe that changes with you know this set releasing and the next set releasing, but as of right now, yeah, I'm not seeing it. Yeah, maybe maybe with the Magic Missile um, and the reprint of the two Call for Words global, uh, people are saving a bunch of bolts to you know ping off your Scarlet Witch. I could see that at a higher <laughs> level, a higher yeah. level discussion. Or if you know um, your opponent has saved a bunch of distraction globals to try and yeah, because you're playing against like a hard control team, something like that. Yeah. Or um, what's the one we just mentioned where you have to pay one to prevent them re-rolling your level one, level two characters? Oh, yeah, your favorite one. Well, not your favorite yeah. one, but the one you enjoy. Yeah. Malignant Plague Caster, yeah. For those yeah. reasons, I'll bump it from a C- minus to a C. I, I could see those. Those. I tell you what, it's way better in Golden Age than it is in Golden Age, yeah. I give it yeah. a B just because how good this would be in Golden Age. Yeah, if but we're yeah, considering like gold, Golden now. Age and all of these, the, yeah, I, I could see that. Yeah, totally. Yeah. The first one's Plague Marine, Festering Wound. Plague Marine is a two-drop with two affiliations and a two-two on top, so the top side is crappy. 
but uh, it's a 1-1 one, one and a 2-1 and a 2-2, two, two, right? So not, not yeah. great stats for a 2-drop, but the abilities are super fun. Like this first one says, when a sidekick character die is KO'd, you may field a Plague Marine character die from your used pile or prep area at level 2. So if your sidekick gets KO'd, whether by you or by your opponent, then you get a 2-1. So your sidekick basically turns into a, from a 1-1 one, one to a 2-1, and you ramp a die. Does it need to be active? No, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but uh, they've printed something like this, right? Sort they of. have, but they generally say that Pepper Pots doesn't need to be active for this ability. I, I don't know if it That's true. You know, they, do, they didn't put that was. sort of text on here. So if, no. if you do have to have one of these active before you can use said ability, I would knock it down a peg. But if you don't, I think it's a little bit more interesting. Now, I don't think this it's is okay. super, super like really good, but it's fun. And you throw it on that five cost Lord of Contagion that pings, and you have something that's interesting. I give this Let a C you're... plus. I give this a C plus. I think this is a D for me. I, I, if I need, there's lots of good two cost fists at the moment. Yeah. Speaking of, let's keep going. When Plague Marine attacks, you may KO a sidekick character die, and if you do, Plague Marine deals one damage to the uh, KO'd character die's controller. So it's a May ability, meaning you don't have to trigger it uh, if you don't want to. So if your opponent doesn't have sidekicks, then you just have a standard old 2-drop, two 2-2. Two, two. So it's pretty bad. But yep. if your opponent does field any sidekick ever, then you have a 2-drop that deals 1 damage to your opponent and removes a blocker before blockers are assigned, which is really yep. good. That's like a yeah. poor man's That's like a poor man's Black Widow. Yeah. yeah. Look at that, right? Come on. Isn't that good? It's okay. Uh, I think it's cool. I give it a B. But there's just like better. Like there's a Black Widow that when attacks just deal one damage. If your opponent has the higher level, it doesn't have this. Would you play this in draft? Yeah, probably. In a heartbeat, right? Yeah. Okay, let's talk about Vectors of Death and Disease, Ooh. which is a card we both enjoy. Uh, while Plague Marine is active, your sidekick character dies gain plus one plus one and are KO'd at the end of your turn. Yes. Uh, I don't know why I like this card so much. I think this <laughs> card is super fun. All right, it is. I will. I will tell you right now. I've already played with it, and it is super fun. It is super fun. You buy it one two drop, and all of your sidekicks now become two twos. That's super good. I mean, that is just straight up super good. I, so they tried to mitigate it right by having by having it KO. Then, but yeah. who cares, man? I don't care because I just get a bunch of dice to roll next time. Yeah, and then, yeah, maybe you don't have as many sidekicks as before because you didn't roll half of them, but you just fix one to a sidekick again and just keep yeah. going with a bunch of tutus. Like, this is a great card that you just slap onto, a, a like, a semi-casual, semi-competitive team uh, as, like, a secondary win con. Just, it's a two-drop. Yep. yep. You don't have to do anything for that. You can sneeze and get two energy and then just buy this, and there you go. Like, that's awesome. I like but, this yeah, card a lot. Plus one, plus one to sidekicks is very powerful. Um, plus, plus it can fit onto just like a lot of different little spammy teams. So yeah, you just get your sidekicks get plus two, plus one, plus one. Yeah, and attack with them. I gave it a oh, B plus. Uh, I gave it a C brackets B plus. There you the go. C is probably like realistically what it's going to come uh, out exactly. As. But your heart of hearts is what super fun. I'm I'm, I'm running <laughs> that. It's like the card. It's like the Ant Man. Like I'm just hyped about it. I'm gonna. It's the first card I'm going to build around. You just pull it out of the box, throw everything else yeah. to the side, grab the couple of dice that come with it, and just slap it down. Because that thing is fun. Yeah. Poxwalker, one drop, fist character, blank text. You got a 1-2 on top, you got to pay for it, but the other ones are 1-1 one, one and a no 1-2 for free. It's a one drop fist character that you can use with that five drop Lord of Contagion. It's got two affiliations for team up. It's got two affiliations. Other than that, oh. it's just like... Not got horrendous I'd pick stats it up. for one drop. I'd pick oh, yeah, it up in like a draft or something, and it would be like meh. So that's just a C. Like, do you know what it is? If it is because Lantern Ring isn't a thing anymore, right? They can print stuff like this now. Um, I was harsh on it. I, it's just because it's ugly. I gave it a D. <laughs> it is kind of like there's nothing to look <laughs> uh, at it looks, there. It's like an elephant on the dice. <laughs> <laughs> it bad. does. the The die is terrible. It looks the like die an is so bad. <laughs> I just picture the elephant too. Yeah. All right. The next one. Two drop with swarm. So two drop swarm characters aren't bad. No, they're not bad. Uh, Poxwalker gets plus one attack for each other Poxwalker character die in the field zone, counting both players. Very very similar to, and you mentioned this in the uh, thing that we were working on before this. It's very similar to Batiri Battle Stack. And Batiri has better stats. It does have better stats. Yeah, less so. uh, affiliations, but that doesn't generally matter. 
Um, but Teary Battlestack has a good card. Like if we were if we were doing a yeah. rating of that set, that yeah. card would be like a, a solid B, maybe yeah. B plus. That card's good. Yeah. Um, this card is not as good, but it is still pretty good. I gave it a C just because the is better, straight up. It is straight up better. I give Teary a B, so I give this a C. Unless you wanted to put some of those things around it, like uh, some affiliated characters around it, that could do some things. Poxwalker Mindless. Two drop swarm again. This time it is unblockable when attacking alone. And I believe that means the die. So if one Poxwalker die attacks alone. I think that's what they ruled Wolverine as. Yeah. When so, I and, gave it a C because I can't remember the last time. I don't know if there is an unblockable two cost. So one of my favorite cards um, is Splinter's Teachings, the global. And this just to me is like, yeah, let's just put this on a team with uh, Splinter's Teachings. Yeah, I could see that. And steal this, your big stuff. This plus Splinter's Teachings plus push with one die means bad things for your opponent. Yeah, right. Like you just have a Wonder that Woman so fun. your characters can't be affected by globals. Steal whatever stat they have. What did I give this? I gave this a C. But I, I think I'm going to mess around with this. Um, this could be fun. This would probably be higher personally for me. I gave this a B-, minus, which is yeah. strange because I talked it down just a moment ago. But, yeah, I mean, still. Still pretty good. Uh, Primaris Aggressor, 4-drop fist with double affiliations. A 2 five, 5 on top. Bolt Storm Gauntlets uh, says, While Primaris Aggressor is active, when an opposing character die attacks, deal 1 damage to it. And then it's got the double fist global that says uh, once per turn, all character dice, everything gets plus one plus, uh, plus one attack. Excuse me. The global is really good. Giving everything plus one is generally okay if you're using it on the right team because you're mainly giving your stuff plus one, right? To deal this with is it. a good defense against the global because they can't just pump a bunch of their sidekicks, right? Because they're all going to die when they attack. So I like that kind of like control aspect of it. It stops a bunch of... I mean, it stops, like, the Ant-Man attacking uh, for three damage because they die. It stops Yanti unblockable. That's the thing. It, for me, it stops Yanti, and it stops... Like, I guess Ant-Man. Um, um, yeah, it draw, I mean, like, some of the inset stuff, it just straight-up kills, too. Like, the Pox Walker that we talked about and those uh, Plague Marines. So it kills mm -hmm. some stuff in set, which is nice. I guess for that reason, I should I should value it a little higher than I did. I gave it a C, so I could bump it up to, like, a C plus, B minus. And in set, it gives basically all your character, your opponent's range characters minus one attack, right? In what way? Minus one defense, sorry. Because whatever they're attacking with, that has range. Although you can just attack with one character, can't you? Yes, yes you can. But you're doing one damage to whatever they're attacking with. Correct. Before the range triggers. Um, let's see, what would, when it attacks, declare attackers, range triggers, then this, right? Yes. Yeah, so but you're basically the stack. Yeah, you ping him. Yeah, definitely. And you don't have to run range and at that point. And you have to ping less. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you have to uh, invest less. This is an interesting card. Interesting card. So what did you give it? I think that global is super good. B. B. All right. Let's keep Just on for the cruising. global alone, bumped it up. I think the ability on the die would probably be a C. Yeah. But the global um, makes it a lot more impactful, certainly. Next up is this uh, Primaris Aggressor Firestorm that just straight up has frag. It's got the same ability global-wise um, that the other one yep. did. But I think we both talked about frag already. Frag is, is not very good. In general, yep. frag is just frag kind is of good. bad. So And it has same global, which is good. Crapper ability. Yeah, worse ability. So I gave this one lower. I think I gave this a D. Yeah, I gave this a D as well. Yep, I gave this a D. Good for the global only is what I typed. And that is the case. All right, last one is Relentless Advance. This one has range one built in, and it says, while Primaris Aggressor is active, when an opposing character die is KO'd by range, prep a die from your bag. That's true. I, I gave this a C plus. Um, makes you want to build a range team, and I guess it depends on how much you value range. Uh, I value it slightly lower, but I could see why you might bump this up to a B. Um, stuff that brings a team together is always very interesting um and i'm glad this card exists uh yeah, inset ramp is always useful and i think this is something you want to be looking out for in drafts definitely yeah i gave this a b minus and mainly mm -hmm. because i've tried this out both with a couple of range characters built into the team and with the really amazing venerable dreadnought that gives all of your stuff range 
both ways it provides some ramp and so the, just the idea of prepping with range by KOing your opponent's sidekicks or even just like a low drop that has low defensive stats in set this is really easy to do um, using range to do that and then prepping dice all before blockers are declared you're pulling stuff out of their field um, you're prepping dice for next turn and then you're free to push with a uh, you know character advantage it's just really really good it does like you said rounds that team around